Hello everybody. I wanted to say a word. Um, on a regular basis I receive messages and emails where somebody has ended up having problems with prana or chi or has so-called kundalini problems, uh, often spoken as kundalini syndrome. That comes with, you know, various problems can be physical problems, problems or what seem like physical problems can be very strong emotions like anxiety, whatnot, uh, and just just like strange stuff happening that it doesn't feel it feels ill and strange and not normal and healthy at all. So I get these messages on regular basis and. You know, if you go to yoga forums, qigong um, forums, um, where people discuss any type of practices, you know, you can certainly find uh, lots of these people uh, seeking help to these problems. So here's uh, like a, how do you say, bulletproof advice for people who have such problems and how to prevent from those problems happening, okay? So, first of all, I already briefly mentioned that uh, this, these problems, these imbalances and all kinds of, can be really intense problems in the subtle body are caused by chi, also known as prana, and uh, mistakenly called as kundalini problems. But this is not kundalini shakti that is causing it. It is prana or chi that is, there's too much of it and um, it starts breaking the system, okay? But there's one very simple and easy way how to fix this and how to prevent this from ever happening. And that is that chi or prana is a servant to energy of basic awareness. I'm using the word basic awareness, which is kind of like a Buddhist term, but you know, you can talk, you can, I, I can, I could call it God, energy of God, energy of Buddha, energy of the spirit or Holy Spirit. Um, something that is pure, uh, energy of that which is pure inside us. So this energy, you can connect with it simply by recognizing your own basic awareness like this. Which is like an advanced way to do it. Or classical ways, ways to connect with the energy of the pure spirit, energy of God, energy of Buddha nature, is to say prayers, you know, well-wishing, wishing good for others, wishing good for oneself, wishing happiness for oneself, wishing happiness for others. That's a very simple prayer that you can formulate verbally in your mind however you like, and this creates you know, you can feel, you can actually feel, you can feel the change in your heart, in your emotional side, in your mind. You can feel that this energy really, you can feel it and it creates a shift in your body mind. It creates a shift in your energy. So prayer is one and mantra is second. So, you know, usually uh, they, well, there are mantras that you do not need an en empowerment for. You know, I come from both Buddhist and Hindu tantric traditions. So just to name a few, there is White Tara and Avalokiteshvara, Manjustri and Vajrasattva from the Buddhist side of practices, you know, that, you know, you can practice if you feel inclined to start mantra practice. So mantra is one way, and of course you can take um, the name of any past spiritual master from Jesus to Buddha to Lao Tzu to Guru Padmasambhava, whose, whose uh, <laughs> uh, mask is above my head. Uh, so you can take the name of any spiritual master and simply start repeating that name to yourself 
as an invitation for the master to give blessings to you directly. So, you know, this method that I'm describing here, inviting the blessings of a guru or gurus, it's an ancient practice called guru yoga that is practiced by millions and millions of uh, yoga practitioners and practitioners of yoga tantra every day. So you can simply choose um, a spiritual master who you have, who you have uh, respect and devotion towards and just start calling blessings. And this, these blessings, again, you can feel, you can really uh, feel the shift, you can feel the energy and it will put the prana or chi check. So it will start immediately balancing whatever is happening in in the prana or chi energy, just like the prayer does. Third way, um, is the fourth way, third or fourth way to balance the prana or chi is to, uh, well, this is kind of a yogic way, is to work with certain areas in the subtle body, perhaps um, to use a very common, not really correct word, but one way to uh, connect with the sp spirit or God or Buddha inside is to make connection with the energy system here in the body and outside the body in the aura with the so-called Mahasiddha Bhumis or Amrita Kshetras. I call them Amrita Kshetra, which means like uh, areas of uh, pure and deathless energy. Um, it's not really a correct word, but maybe you could call these Amrita Chakras, although they are not chakras. They are not, uh, not chakras in the same way as in the system. But these Amrita Kshetras or Mahasiddha Bhumis you can connect easily by, you know, you feel your body in sitting meditation. And then you simply, after a while, you let your attention ascend up from the body area, through the head, over the head, over the head, over the head, about five, six meters above the head. And, you know, this is, you know, you do need some subtle sensation to be able to detect. But at some point you feel like a click, like an energetical shift, and you feel this wonderful, soft, loving, graceful energy shower down into your body, and this also puts the prana or chi into check. It will immediately start balancing it. So one way to do, fourth or third way to do this, to control prana, is to connect to these centers above the head. And you can connect the same centers also below the body. Five, six meters below the perineum and the same centers are there. So they are both above and below. So here I've uh, briefly described few ways how to fix problems if you have with chi or prana uh, and to prevent all of these. And um, I just want to say that, you know, prayer, mantra, uh, or connecting the subtle body or, you know, being able to recognize basic awareness uh, immediately. These are universal ways. Universal. So it doesn't matter which tradition you practice or if you have prana problems, you know, without belonging to a tradition, without following a method. But these are universal ways. They work for anybody and everybody. So, and also one a bit... Um, one thing that is true is that if one's cultivation method, be it Hatha Yoga, be it some type of Qigong or Neigong or whatever, if it doesn't have prayers or mantras or uh, the practice of directly recognizing basic awareness, if it doesn't have these things, then automatically you know, there is no energy of basic awareness, there is no energy of pure spirit, there is, there is no energy of the Buddha within, no energy of the God within to keep 
the vital energy chi or prana in check and consequently this will make you how do you say susceptible to problems to these chi or prana problems okay thank you for this turned out to be 10 minutes so thank you for watching if you got this far and talk to you later bye bye